I'm passing the phone to the Wonder Woman of the team. I'm passing it to the bravest on the team. I'm passing the phone to the powerhouse of the team. I'm passing the phone to the honorary mom of the team. Hey! We have to get you our car. That's our mom. That's our mom! Hey, Hoda Kotb became the honorary mom of Team USA Gymnastics during the Olympics this summer. Hoda's joining me now. Welcome, Hoda. <laughs> Baby, go ahead, miss my girls. Always love seeing you. You look fantastic. I'm a, how you like uh, that honorary mom title from those girls? Oh my God, that touched my heart. It touched my soul. I really felt very protective of them, like still do. It's like one of those things I was like, nobody mess with my girls but it was a it was a glorious time at the olympics and uh, those girls really did touch me mario oh i loved uh, seeing you cover the games uh, outside of the girls what were some other highlights for you um i just love the fact that we had such low expectations and when we got there we could not believe the electricity we couldn't believe that it didn't matter that you know the fans weren't packed in there like there were people who were going to win gold medals. There were moments in that gym that I won't forget. I mean, there were masks and there was distancing. But boy, you just realize when it's the Olympics, babe, it's the Olympics. It don't matter. The rest of it is just noise. But it was it ended up be, being even more special to me. I thought, man, it's almost like New York. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. If you can succeed at those Olympics, you're above and beyond. You're right about that. And Hoda, how was it being away from your daughters? You know what it's like when you're away from the kids. It's like it's it's like a real knife in the heart. Um, coming home was like one of the sweetest things in the world. And, you know, you reprioritize your life once kids come in. And there are certain moments like I want my kids to know work is fun. I love I love going to work. But here's what I love more than going to work. I love coming home. It's like a ticker tape uh, parade at our house. That's exactly, no, you're exactly right. No matter what kind of day you're having, when you come home and you hear those little feet kind of running to greet yeah. you, it's, it's the best feeling ever. <laughs> um, I also uh, saw you posted a pic, it was with your mom, I believe, with your girls. How I'm cute. not sure, Mario, if there's a better feeling in the world than watching, you know, your mom with your kids. I mean, this is, to me, I never imagined this image would exist in my lifetime to see that. And I, so holding my girls may be my favorite uh, emotion, but watching my mom hold their hands, it's like a dream that you never thought would be real. And my girls are taking years off my mom's life. She's like getting younger yeah. every time I see her because she wants more time with these two. I agree with you. However, I have one issue with it because my mom and dad were so strict with me and they're spoil my kids. And they're so, I'm like, where was this? My dad was like the strictest guy. I was like, where was this? Why would you, like, <laughs> they're much better grandparents, I think. Or loving, I should say, than parents. I was like, there's no, there's no tough love here from you guys. I guess that's the advantage of being grandparents. Um, Hoda, I wanted to talk about uh, getting into the podcast space. Tell me about making space with Hoda Copy. By the way, can I, Mario, I'm on a high right now. I just finished moments ago interviewing Oprah and Maria together. Maria Shriver, Oprah Winfrey, oh, wow. friends of 45 years. They have never spoken together. They, j I literally, and I'm not kidding, I just wrapped up that podcast in, in the studio next door to me. I was so moved. They talked about like how they spent their careers, 45 years, like mothering each other. Huh. Oprah was there for Maria when her marriage fell apart. Maria was there uh, for Oprah when the OWN Network you know, was was stumbling around and they were there for each other during the lowest moments. And I'd never seen them talk about that friendship and the, how yeah. they cherish each other. They got teary. They, it was beautiful. And I'm so moved. But that's what it is. It's about like they made space for friendship. They've been friends for 45 years. And sometimes they just sit next to one another when they have a problem. They don't try to solve it. And right. I've been so turned on by this podcast, Mario, because it's given me a chance to look like, I feel like I'm learning life lessons left and right. I'm like with a notepad going, and then what happened? Okay, and then how did you fix? Okay, great. It's like you're learning as you go, and it's been the coolest experience. Those are two incredible ladies, and I love the fact that you're right. You don't necessarily always have to try to fix a friend's problem if you're just a good listener, and they can kind of almost figure it out by themselves, and you sort of just got to be there for each other. That's such a smart point. You're right. What about your, uh, your your former partner in crime, Kathy Lee? Is, uh, is uh, she, she been on your show yet? Not yet, but I got to tell you, Kath, I don't know that she's ever been happier. 
She's in a city she loves, Nashville. She is, um, you know, she's got some, uh, she's got a nice man in her life that I, you know, that I'll let her discuss that whenever she's ready. <laughs> but she's creating beautiful music, which is what she's always loved. And I just think she's at this moment in her life where she never did care what anybody thought. You know, she just kind of did her own thing. But now I think she's even freer. I think she's doing all the things she loves in a city that she's crazy about. Cass lives nearby with her new husband. Like, she has it all right now. Like, I think she's living in what may be one of her perfect moments in her life. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Very cool. Um, and Jenna Bush, my girl who I love so sweet, y'all admitted some secrets on TikTok recently. You said you've, you've drunk out uh, country superstar Thomas Rhett. What happened there? You want me to do it right now? You want it right now? <laughs> Get in there. Okay. You know what? Sometimes for Mario, you just got to do this. Hold on one second. Thomas Red is one of my favorite drunk uh, uh, drunk tops. Hold on. Let's see if he does it. <laughs> Would you die right now if he did it? If Would he you answered, die? That'd be Here. awesome. We'll We're leave him a it. message if Miggy doesn't answer. Oh, you FaceTime him even better. I'm doing it right now. Come on, Thomas. He's going to be mad. Answer. Come on, Thomas. Wait, 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 wait. Come on now. Pick up. You got some new music. You know it. <laughs> okay. Oh, we gave it a you shot. Know what? You know what's worse? Than, oh, hold on. Just a quick hi. Just one quick hi. Say what's hi, up? Mario. <laughs> what's up, Thomas? Oh, I just want to <laughs> tell you that I love you. No, look, Mario just accused me of drunk dialing you, and I said no. I I always do it sober. But anyway, I just want to tell you I love you. <laughs> right on, right. Thomas. Hey, what a nice Bye, guy. guy. <laughs> big old, big old smile. <laughs> right Come on, there. what a guy! That's awesome. I love him with all my soul. But yeah, I do do that sometimes. Well, well, hold on. I love you, and I think that uh, the intimate um, uh, space in a podcast, people are gonna feel so comfortable uh, talking mm. to you. You're gonna get such awesome stuff. Can't wait to check it out. So please don't forget to check out Hoda's new original podcast, Making Space with Hoda Kotb. Thank you, Hoda, for love your time. You. Love you too, honey. We'll be right back. That was great, Hoda.